One of the reasons why Super Mario 64 is so beloved to many people was that it was the first game that felt so immersive, given that this was the first 3D game for most people. And I was one of those people. Playing it for the first time on the Wii Virtual Console when I was like 9 or 10 sparked so much imagination. But lately, I've been thinking, what if I take this immersion to an unhealthy degree and start thinking, if I just existed in the world of Mario 64, where would I live? So in case anyone else is thinking about this for some reason, it is my goal to analyze every area in the game to answer the question, where should you live in Super Mario 64? I'm going to be using dumb logic and quote-unquote realism, so this video is just for entertainment and not to be taken seriously. But without further ado, let's begin our hunt. We'll start with the first place you'll see in the game, the castle grounds. And I don't think you'll find a more peaceful and comforting area in the whole game than this one. You've got plenty of space and nobody to bother you except for the birds singing. Me personally, I would like to set up a tent in front of this waterfall right here. I believe this to be the perfect spot. The downside being that this is the castle grounds. You are technically squatting on the castle's front lawn. But if somehow you're legally allowed to do this, it's a great place to call your home. But if outdoor camping isn't your thing and you prefer being inside, our next option is right through these doors. Peach's Castle, which I believe to be an even better choice. Due to the sheer size of this castle, you have many rooms you can call your own, all coming in different shapes and sizes that may fit your preferences. Me personally, I would choose the room with the Jolly Roger Bay painting. It's got nice lighting, you get some fish to stare at, and it's very spacious. But you do have to share it with this fella, and I don't think you can convince him to leave. But if you want something that's more at the scope of a bedroom, there is the room up to the first stairs to the right, it is pretty small, but it is also very empty and simple, so it's easy to decorate it and make it how you want. And you even have easy access to the secret slide, which you can just slide down whenever you're bored. Now it does come with the risk of death by falling into the black void, but that's what makes the slide so fun. The risk. The downside of choosing to live in the castle is that I imagine that the rent is quite expensive, given that this castle belongs to the ruler of the kingdom. If you can afford it, or if you can somehow avoid being seen, this is one of your best options. It seems like we already found the best place, but just to be sure, we're going to check out all the other levels, just in case if we find something better. Okay? You better not be leaving the video right now. So, Bomb Bomb Battlefield is up first. Now, this may not be the best fit for a home because, well, it's a goddamn battlefield. The pink and black bombs are at constant war with each other. Shooting these weird water bombs at each other, you are bound to be caught in the crossfire. If you really insist, you can make your base on the summit. You'll just have to get past these balls and kill the King Bobomb on the top. You can also try the floating island so you can stay out of the battlefield and watch the chaos from afar, but good luck getting over there. In general, this is not the best place to live because, I mean, it's a battlefield. And Wom's Fortress is not any better. Not only is it small, compact, and isolated in the abyssal sky, there is a lot of commotion going on in this fortress, so it's going to be difficult to find some peace and quiet. You're also just not welcome here. Thwomps and Wumps are just going to try and kill you on sight. Maybe not a place you can call home, but it would make great content for a 24-hour challenge on YouTube. On a different note, Jolly Roger Bay is great. People love this level for lots of reasons, but the most common reason is just how good it makes them feel. I think the best place for your home here would be right at the start. You have plenty of room on this nice long beach. The only other forms of life in the bay are these clams, which like, the clams, they're just vibing. And the infamous eel, which understandably might scare you off, but he is quite far away from the beach. You don't disturb him and he won't hurt you. The alternative would be the cave, which I don't know why you would want to, since it's got a bunch of Goombas, falling pillars that somehow know your exact location, and this assortment of treasure chests which I forgot what order you're supposed to open them. I think it's this one first. Ah! Next up is Cool Cool Mountain, which right off the bat, you already have a cabin. No need to build anything yourself like you might have had to in the previous courses. It's also a lot bigger than it seems because it connects to the cabin on the bottom of the mountain through the slide. As long as you are careful and don't fall off the slide to your doom, you got yourself not one, but two warm and cozy snow cabin- Excuse me? Yeah, one thing I neglected to mention is you will have a roommate, a big penguin. That's either a good or bad thing, depending on the person. And for those who don't like the idea of a big penguin roommate, your only other option is to sleep out in the cold. Yeah, the big penguin sounds pretty good right now, doesn't it? I guess there is also Bowser in the Dark World, which is just a death-defying obstacle course in the middle of wherever the fuck. 
I can't even stretch any logic to defend this one. This is just not inhabitable. And while I'm at it, I'll just give the other two Bowser stages the same verdict. And before we move on, I'll just save us some time and just say that the Wing Cap stage, the Vanish Cap stage, Metal Cap stage, the Aquarium, and the Cloud stage on the third floor are not really worth our time. They're obviously not well suited to live in, and I don't want to give each of them time to explain why. Let's proceed with our house hunt to the backyard, where we'll find our way to... Big Boo's Haunt. It's a big haunted house, and depending on the person, this is either awesome or a huge red flag. On the plus side, it is the closest thing in this whole game that resembles a house. I mean, you got a music room, and you can be able to express yourself through the power of music- WHAT THE F- Well, we have the library, where you can sit back and enjoy the power of God GODDAMN- Well, there is this room where you got- Him? Yeah, everywhere I go in that house, someone wants to kill me. If you love the idea of staying at a haunted house and make ghost friends, I guess this is the place for you. Definitely not for me. Anyways, let's take a look at Hazy May's cave. Now, the fact that they have to give you a giant map in order to guide you is not a good sign. But there is some good in here deep down. Just have to do death-defying jumps over pits, maneuver your way around a giant sinkhole, giant rolling rocks, knowing your exact location for some reason. And then you just take this elevator and wait. No, I'm not patient. And boom! Secret underground lake with its very own Loch Ness monster. And don't worry, they are a friend. In fact, you can go on a ride with them, which is just awesome. If you want a giant prehistoric buddy and can make it through all the dumb shit to get there, Hazy Maze Cave is just for you. Lethal Lava Land. Now, I know this looks bad. The floor is literally lava, a volcano in the middle that erupts every five seconds. There isn't many names for locations more uninviting than Lethal Lava Land, and most of the small islands are occupied by territorial bullies. You see those three over there? Mo, Joe, and Larry? They are small, but their thirst for blood is quite large. But this place has one shining beacon of hope. The Spinny Log. I don't know about you, but I love the Spinny Log. Most entertaining thing in this whole game. So pros? Spinny Log. Cons? Death at every turn. It's up to you if that's a worthy trade-off. I think it is. Shifting Sandland on the other hand, I might not bother to sell you on this. Deserts are one of the harshest biomes in the whole world. Meltingly hot in the day, freezing cold at night. Closest thing you have as shelter here is this structure, whatever this is supposed to be. But you're awfully close to maybe the creepiest thing in the game. And let's not forget about these weird box faces and quicksand. Yeah, deserts suck and shifting sand land sucks. Don't bother with this one. Dire Dire Docks is an interesting one. The beginning area does not even have any land, just deep water, but if you hold your breath for long enough, you can reach what looks like to be a marine military base. But even here, there is very few places above water. One part that could work for a home is Bowser's submarine, which isn't appearing in the footage because I already did that mission, but it's there, trust me. And he probably doesn't care if you use it, he just needed it to sneak into the castle. So living in a submarine would be good for, I don't know, marine biologists? Our next visit is Snowman's Land. I think this could work if you don't mind the cold. There's a lot of flat and empty land, so there's plenty of space. But like shifting sand land, the climate might be too harsh. There may not be any warm cabins like in Cool Cool Mountain, but you have the next best thing. Igloos! This sucks. Moving on to Wet Dry World. I'm not exactly sure what this place is supposed to be, but I'm sure you can find a way to make it more homey. With the water switches, you can actually make this place a makeshift swimming pool. However, there's the whole thing people have of this place, where it's like, negative aura or something. I don't understand it, but apparently it gives people bad vibes. But of course, we can't forget about the town. Once you unflood the town, you pretty much have a bunch of empty houses all to yourself to claim. Now sure, it is a ghost town, encased underground, isolated from the rest of the world, and you might go insane from the isolation, but... No rent? Taltal Mountain, on the other hand, is one of the most normal levels. It's just a mountain with no crazy gimmick. It is pretty compact, and the chances of falling and breaking all your bones is high and unforgiving. But what about the monkey? Don't lie, you want a monkey friend. Also, Spinny Log is back? Come on. This is easily one of your best choices if you're picking a level. Just set up a tent on the top of the mountain and you are set. Now I might have a little bias for Tiny Huge Island because I hate this stage. Anyways, obviously you don't want to live in a tiny version. I'd be surprised if you even could. 
And the big version isn't all that much better because of all the gymnastics you have to do to get anywhere. But if you really insist, the best place to crash would be Wiggler's Cave. He might be pretty angry because you fucked up his house, but he'll get over it eventually. Or you can just beat it out of him. And from there, you got a cute little Wiggler friend, isn't that nice? Oh. Oh, he died. TikTok clock? You might be thinking, really? The inside of a clock with the sounds of mechanical humming and pendulum swinging 24-7? And getting around is absolutely miserable. Why would I ever want to live here? Well, hear me out, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Just make your way to the very top, and there he is. This is Devin. He runs his own personal gym in the clock, consisting of one treadmill. Any of you bodybuilders out there, you should check out Devin's in TikTok clock. Other than Devin though, yeah, this is kinda shit. And our last place to check out on our house hunting adventure is Rainbow Ride. If you're looking for a home that is normal and practical, you've come to the wrong place, I'm sorry. But if you're looking for something more whimsical, stick around because you have some choices. Beyond this really boring carpet ride is a floating pirate ship. At this point, you can just ignore all of life's problems. No rent, no relationships, no stress, no existential dread. You are now a pirate in the freaking sky. There's also a big floating castle all to yourself. Sure, the fireplace is a bit unstable, but you have a, uh, a table. Honestly, just take the pirate ship. And that concludes our journey for finding a place to call home in Super Mario 64. I'm curious what place you guys decided on, so let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed. This video was such a dumb idea, but that's why I loved making it. Before you leave, make sure to say hi to Devin on the way out.